next presenter is also Lawrence Community Works on their Movement City program. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Yeah. Good evening. Hey. We're awake. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> so as you can tell, I work with youth, so you gotta kind of do the energy <laughs> thing. They give me energy too. Um, my name is Jessica Filion. I am the director of Movement City. I will be here to answer questions, and I can give you a blurb, but I would rather let the young people speak for themselves. So this is Justin, one of our Zones members, which is our high school students. Um, hi, uh, I'm Justin, and um, I've been in Movement City since sixth grade. I'm a freshman now. And uh, I, I love Movement City a lot, really. It's, uh, it's helped me with a lot of stuff. It helps me with my homework when I do need help. Sometimes, even when I don't have homework, I go there because I enjoy to be there. I enjoy the staff's company. They also teach us a lot of skills like Photoshop, photography, video making. And they also have teachers for um, stuff like music making and art. Also dance, that's important. And and um, they also have their individual things that they do. Like the most recent one was Family Literature Night on Friday, and that's when they uh, ask the community to get together and to write a poem. And if they want, they can share it out. And if they don't feel comfortable, they don't have to. They also have stuff like open mic when they ask the youth to come in and write and yell out their poems, or <laughs> songs, or even art if they want to. Last time I went, I saw an, a pretty old guy just sharing his poem as well. So, <laughs> so I don't think there is a twitch limit to that. Um, what else? <laughs> um, what else? Damn, I should have done you're doing a great job. Yeah, Thank you. Yes. I'm really nervous right now. But. So Justin has also been able to go on our, we have a partnership with Youth Opportunities Project. So we do outdoor <coughs> activities with young people. So you want on one of those. Oh, yes, I do. Um, and he was also, what's fun to share about Justin that he also um, recognized is that he was like, Just, you know, why, why am I here? You know, why did you pick me? And part of it has been his growth and maturity level as a young person. In Movement City, he's been able to do a lot of work. It's been really fun to see him grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A great lobbyist yes, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Jess, quick question. Um, sure. For the funding, uh, the thirty thousand dollars that Movement City City is seeking from the city, it would go for personnel, and that personnel focuses exactly on what? Does it? Is that person focusing on Photoshop, photography, uh, developing the music program? It would be me. Oh, Most okay. of it. Mm -hmm. Um, doing everything. So it's a little bit of everything. Okay. Excellent. Keeping you employed. <laughs> yeah, just trying to keep things running. Can you tell us how many students you're servicing this year? Yeah. Uh, we have capacity for about 150 students. Our enrollment right now is at 72. Mm -hmm. um, what's um, not, this is kind of an answer to both your questions though. What's been beautiful about being part of Movement City for the last 15 years is that we now have staff who are young people in the program. Yes. So we have two of our full-time staff and two of our uh, creative staff were Justin's 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to be able to keep Lawrence and the creativity and young people becoming adults, helping other young people. This is a kind of question. Uh, what happened with the program of the GED that we use working work many years ago, so they still working with the GED for the student coming that they don't graduate, they don't have graduation, anything like that, so they have con to continue. So I've been a part of other programs at other sites, mm -hmm. so I also have worked at the Adult Learning Center, so maybe it was that program, but Movement City, so we don't have a formal GED program because we're after school hours. Oh, yeah. um, but we do have academic support. So for example, 100% of our seniors <coughs> last year all graduated. They had cumulatively over $100,000 worth of scholarship money. Um, we keep in touch with them and keep supporting them. We go to report card nights. 
we visit, go to graduations. Yeah. We uh, we now we do uh, with the kids. If you don't have homework, your first twenty minutes in the space, you got to book out. Like I don't want to see your phone. It's not like chit chat in time. We're reading together, and it's it's had a had a really big impact on our members. So that's some of the academic work that we do, even though we do not have a formal GED program. Where is the pipeline created? How are, you, how are you getting these students? I know you must have collaborations with some of our public schools. We work? do. We can always use more kids because we um, love to love on Lawrence kids. Uh, but we, word of mouth is their strongest for our high schoolers. And for our middle schoolers, it's really about um, kids who are locally, so the, the kids in the closest schools. We also we get referrals from um, Department of Mental Health workers. We got referrals, I just met today, from somebody from the Essex County Juvenile like, situation. So they know that we, the work that we do, like Movement City is a family. It's not an after school program where you go and you leave your kid and they get babysat for two hours. Like that's not how we roll. We really, we love each other. Like we, yeah. we that's what we're here for. I do have a question for Justin, since so you did a great job. Um, <laughs> So how you can tell, or how you talk to your friend who not in the program, not to take it only the opportunity, but yes, the benefits, how you encourage them to be part of that, such a great program? Mm -hmm. um, I would, if it was my friend, then uh -huh. I knew that if he's struggling with something, I would tell them, hey, this program can help you with this and that. And if they want something, like to make a video, to make a song, they can also, I can tell them to go there for that. But I would, specifically, I would send them to Movement City for the staff members, because I, I really like the staff members in there. I, really, oh. I grew to them. No, they grew on me. Oh. <laughs> on them. Good. So now you know why they choose you to be here tonight? Not really. <laughs> Good job. Which is your favorite component of the program? What do you favorite? enjoy most? I, mean, I like all of them, honestly. Like all of them? I like them. I like music. I've been in music for a while, for like two days. <laughs> <laughs> and I mainly stay up in the clubhouse making videos, Photoshop. Nice. Um, what else? I tried dancing once. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it didn't go out too well. <laughs> so how are all these programming running? If there's one staff, do you have volunteers? Oh, no, no, no. We have lots of staff. Oh, staff. Okay. oh, okay. So there is a director, which is me. Um, there's three other full-time staff. There's an academic coordinator. There's a clubhouse coordinator. And there's a program coordinator. And then we have creative staff who are professionals in their field. So for example, our art instructor, um, got their two-year degree from Northern Essex and is now in a four-year degree program through their partnership and she lives in our residency and is a working artist. If I can recommend the whole committee, go to these organizations and see it firsthand. I, I think I've been to 95% of all these organizations here. And what you guys do is remarkable. Mm -hmm. Just because someone was right now and asking questions doesn't mean we're not into your programs. It's just that we know it already, exactly. so we know what you do. <laughs> you guys do a fantastic job. One of my favorite, favorite programs in the city. Yes. And I knew it from the old days before you were at the present place. I was part of the Our House Committee. Marta was on it. We um, mm -hmm. were raising the funds to build the place. So I remember Movement City putting on a program in the basement of that building on yeah, on the Island Front Street. Street. I was the I was assistant director back then. Yes. So yeah. But I have a question. Um, my hearing's not that well, so I might have imagined this. But did you say there were there were outdoor activities as well? Yes. Would you like to elaborate on that for me? Uh, they don't. They do it monthly. Uh, the last um, the last one I went to. We went to uh, UMass to go up uh, to see uh, robotic. Oh, okay. oh, the camp one. Oh, my bad. <laughs> the camp one. We went hiking, and we went hiking. There's also one when they stayed overnight. They took their phones, mm -hmm. and they. I don't know what they. So, did. so for our different age groups, they have different timings. So for our younger members, when. Justin went on the hiking trip. He was a stations member, so it's a day-long hiking trip at um, Harold Parker. And then we also do once a year. We do an overnight trip. So last time we went to Mark Cardigan, and we hiked the whole mountain. Yes. And we stayed in the log cabin, and it's 
it's in partnership with Youth Opportunities Project. So they have trained staff and they have the equipment. So thankfully that's, that because that's the biggest hurdle, right? Is get a bunch of city kids yeah. out in the mountains. They're not gonna have hiking boots. But with that partnership, we can borrow the hiking boots and have a trained person. And a Movement City staff member is also trained to be, we call him the fire lord, to do <laughs> um, different stuff. Yeah, and also the AMC will probably help you guys with equipment too. They're usually pretty good about that. They, they fund the Youth Opportunities Project, yeah. <laughs> so that's where it comes from, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and did you, go on the, yeah, did you go on the Mount Cardigan trip? He wasn't old enough yet. Oh, he wasn't old enough, okay. Mm -hmm. I, but my, my daughter and I are big hikers. We've uh, done about half of the trails of our White Mountains. I'd highly recommend it. And if you guys want to do more exploration and get kids outdoors, I go for it. You know what they forgot? They forgot one of the outdoor trips. They bring a whole group to the state house. And they knock on every single one of our legislators just yes. to talk to us. Yes. Well, my name. We're going on Thursday of next week. Oh. oh. Looking forward to it. Any additional Any questions? Time? Okay, thanks very much. Thank you. Next up is Groundwork Lawrence Urban Adventures 2019. Hello, everyone. I hope you're still having a great night. <laughs> uh, so, my name is Abner Rodriguez. Um, I am the education coordinator at Groundwork Lawrence, and I'm going to oversee uh, the Urban Adventures program this summer. Um, and uh, I'll let Sarah introduce herself to you. Uh, my name is Sarah Campbell, and I uh, last summer was the lead educator for the Groundwork Urban Adventure Summer Program. Yeah, uh, so just to give you a little overview of what um, Urban Adventures is all about, uh, Urban Adventures gives elementary and middle school youth here in Lawrence uh, meaningful summer enrichment, um, focused on exposing the students to public health issues and ultimately learning uh, uh, preventative measures they can practically apply to their lives. Um, Urban Adventures teaches students to lead healthier lives uh, by accessing resources within the city of Lawrence, uh, like food, um, local food, uh, local food assets, and um, open green spaces with, uh, within the city. And um, ultimately, they also learn the importance of their physical environment and the role it plays in their overall wellness. Um, Urban Adventures is not just a great delivery system to engage um, Lawrence youth, but we also provide um, six jobs for uh, local youth here in Lawrence uh, working as counselors. Uh, starting as junior counselors, they can be at the ages of 16 all the way to uh, our lead counselor, um, which is a Lawrence public school teacher. Yeah. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit more about what we did last summer. Um, so there are two main components to the program. We do a service learning project, so students first have to learn what service learning is, which is bigger than regular community service. It's a sustained project where they're applying skills that they're learning in school to a community problem. Mm -hmm. And then there's a social emotional learning component where they're learning about themselves and their feelings and how they can be uh, applying uh, more focus to solving these problems. And our focus the last summer was on diabetes because there's a higher incidence of diabetes and other diet related illnesses in the city. And so we taught the kids about what that problem was and they came up with their own solutions that they uh, could use to solve it. Um, we had three different groups and they came up with four different ways to address this problem. They created a cookbook, which you're gonna see a sample of in your folders later. Um, they made a balanced plate game for kids to engage kids about what a healthy plate looks like. The, we had a garden party to introduce community members to a local garden. And they also did uh, cooking demonstrations and free samples of healthy foods at the farmer's market um, uh, in Lawrence. Um, and then as I said, they apply skills that they're actually learning in school to these problems. So they use statistics from math, they generate their own survey questions, and then go out and actually collect and analyze that data so that what they're, the solutions they come up with are based on actual community needs and interests. Um, use ELA and science and health too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a math teacher, I'm sorry. <laughs> Alrighty, any questions? What areas of Lawrence, by the way, nice presentation, thank, thank you, you for being here. What areas <laughs> of Lawrence do you guys um, provide these uh, educational course classes? 
Um, so we uh, recruit from all over Lawrence. So our main uh, students come from Lawrence Public Schools, and the classes are, also, are uh, regularly held at the Bruce School, and we also do drop-ins uh, at the Boys and Girls Club, too. And the Partham. And the Partham, yeah. So Partham, Bruce, and Boys Club? Yeah, but it services any youth throughout Lawrence, not just a certain area. <coughs> so the, the five staff would service these areas, but then the 45 students that you um, select to come in and participate in the five-week service learning program, they're selected how? There's an application process? Um, yeah, they yeah. apply. Um, so applications are dropped off, dropped off at all um, local public schools, and then they recruit educators like me who are familiar with both students and groundwork, and then we leverage our relationships at school to get kids to come and work hard all summer. And then they, once they get there, they love it, and they're really excited. Um, we did also do surveys of them to talk so they could respond to us about how they felt about the program. And 85% um, of participants expressed that they were more comfortable expressing their own ideas to their peers and to adults because of the work we did in the program. And 83% that they were, said that they were confident that they could work with their peers to solve community problems because <coughs> of the work that they did with us in the summer. Um, we also do have some kids who come back for a second year. Um, so there's interest in repeating the process once they've done it once. And do you guys work out of your um, Canal Street location for the summer five-week five program? I know you guys go to different sites. No. Um, there were two groups at the Bruce School and then a third group at the Partham, plus additionally the drop-in program at the Boys and Girls Club. Yeah, so this summer actually all of the classroom or, uh, programming is going to be held at the Bruce School. So we have already had created a partnership with the Bruce, so the classes that are going to be um, split up into 15 individual students are going to be held at the Bruce. and then. Uh, at the Boys and Girls Club will do uh, provide a drop-in. So and the Bruce School is a good partnership because summer school happens at the Bruce right. School as well. Not every school in Lawrence has summer school, mm -hmm. but the Bruce School does. So there are lots of kids who are already there. Mm -hmm. And so it's easy for them to come and stay after. And then some kids also walk, like get their lunch at Gilmet and walk over to the Bruce. Mm -hmm. um, we get a lot of traveling between the two schools. So how many students would you say you service last time? Uh, 195. With both programs? Yeah. And the, sal the, the money you're requesting tonight would be for the salary of the six... The counselors, yeah. The 100% counselors will go who to the do counselors. this work throughout the entire year? Uh, do the work throughout the summer. Right. The summer. So yeah. the, and the summer is five weeks with youth, but then the counselors come beforehand too, and they also learn about service learning themselves and social-emotional learning. And then they use what they learn first in the training program and apply it to the program themselves. And they bring their own interests, too, as they're talking with youth. Yeah, exactly. So the salaries will be uh, paid to um, the counselors for the training period, the actual implementation of the programming, and then uh, reviews for after. And how long is that time period? So I know there's five weeks to the summer program, uh, but the training, implementation. Yeah, so there's, um, the training is two weeks. So two weeks before um, the actual programming starts, so probably the last two weeks in June, um, and then the five weeks of the program begins, and then they usually stay about a week or two after. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, thanks very much. Thank you, guys. Our next presenter is also from Mark Lawrence, um, Green Team, Summer 2019. Good evening. Thank you for your time this evening. My name is Matt Moore. I'm the Education Manager at Groundwork Lawrence. I oversee the Green Team. It's my pleasure to serve Groundwork since July. With the support of the Community Development Grant, Block Grant, we are able to employ 30 high school youth and six adults. Wilkins Lugo has benefited from the grant as a high schooler and as a leader. Wilkins is now an AmeriCorps member and doing a year of service supporting the Green Team. Ladies and gentlemen, Wilkins. Hi. As Max said, I am a Green, green, green Team alumni, both in the sense as a member and as a leader. I enjoyed this pro, pro programming after my high school days so much that I pursued its leadership opportunities. I was fortunate to have worked alongside the Green Team implementing the pro program, and even more fortunate now in helping developing it. I have had the, pri the privilege of working alongside Pris Priscilla Hinao, one of the longtime Green, green Team members over this past summer and currently. Ladies and gents, Pris Priscilla. 
Hello, I'm Priscilla. I've been working in the green team for continuously three and a half years. And my favorite experience in the green team was when my team partnered with Eagle Eye Institute in order to build a bench and a mini shelter using wood that was repurposed from forest trees that have fallen down. And during this experience, it has taught me a lot about teamwork, quick thinking, and using my surroundings to help me uh, do goals. And I feel like using these experiences, I was able to grow from a much more shy worker into a much more professional worker in the nonprofit field. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my co-worker, Angel. Good evening, my name is Angel Ramos. This is my first year working on the green team. And my favorite experience so far has been going to the Brown Center, the, yeah, going to the Brown Center at UNH, and also climbing up a 35 foot tree and walking across a bridge. Yes, I was safe and secure. <laughs> this helped me, this has helped me mentally, like mentally stronger, become mentally stronger because at first I was really scared to go up and everything. But now like, I feel safe to go up. Another thing I like about Groundwork Lawrence is everybody, like all the staff, they're really welcoming and they all have a positive body. We'd like to answer any questions you guys have. Thank you. <laughs> what do you look forward to doing in the summertime fest out of the things that you've done in the green team? Uh, during the summertime, I have uh, worked at Ferris Park, which is near the Grand McLaurin's offices. And over there, we clean up the park, and I really like to see the difference in what I do, seeing the before and after. Yeah. So I really like to put the work in and be able to see the product of what I do. That's Thank nice. Thank you for the explanation. Mm -hmm. And what about you, young man? I haven't worked in the summer yet. You, oh, you haven't yet? No. Well, wait till you get up here. <laughs> Applications went live today for our oh. summer program. So mm -hmm. they, were, they were all excited to hear that. <laughs> It's great to see that funding goes directly to paying the mm -hmm. youth. Um, mm -hmm. Just shows direct impact. So, thank you. I love the program. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. Thanks. Great job. Thank you. Next we have the Greater Lawrence Community Voting Program, Youth Recreation and Education Project yeah. at the Voting House. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How are you doing, ladies and gentlemen? My name is uh, Jed Kaler. I'm the executive director at the Greater Lawrence Community Voting Program. I provided a packet. We're going to go through it page by page. So um, this is my eighth time presenting to this committee, and I'm so happy that you guys have us back every year and help the program and the kids that are part of it. Um, and every year I talk about the voting aspects and what we do and why we need the money for the staffing for the kids to work at the program and, and work with our kids. Um, what I did in this packet is on the front page you can see the many different kind of boating activities, the sailing, the canoeing, the kayaking, the stand-up paddle boarding. If you go to page two, you're gonna see the children in the backyard. We do ten of the we had to do ten of these this year. <laughs> this is an orientation for the how to use a kayak, a canoe, how to get the kids out onto the water. Now I usually stand up here and talk about that aspect of the program, but what a lot of people don't know is what we're gonna get into in the following picture. So if we go to the next one, you're gonna see the educational programs that we do. This is a poetry class taught by Rich Pardova, who's a historian in the city of Lawrence, but also an avid. He's so into poetry and he helps and does it with the kids. If you flip to the next page, that's Jonathan. He goes to the Frost School. And that's the poem that he wrote during his classes. Um, and the kids have taken to it and they just love it. If you go to the next page, we got Jimbo Shane from the History Center and. Um, one Jackson Street, he's doing basket weaving with the kids. 
So the kids are learning art, the arts, through different programs. And then if you flip to the next page, you can see that they were on the waterfront and the boats going on behind them. So we are doing the continued boating activities on the water with the kids. That has not stopped. What we've done is our attendance numbers have been so large year after year growing that we've had to expand on programs. And this is how we've expanded on programs. A new one, if we switch to the next page, archery, <laughs> which is a program that the kids, they all want to get it. It's, it's very, very popular. This is taught by the Parker River Wildlife uh, Refuge Rangers. Um, safe tip arrows in a very safe environment. Uh, if you swip to the next page, you can see one of the classes with the kids against the net and they have the um, archery targets behind them. So they like to try to hit the balloons. It's something very unique that's not offered around the city of Lawrence and that we were able to get it here for the kids and they love it. If you continue on the next page, you're gonna see a federal wildlife officer teaching a child how to fish. We have the beautiful river in the city of Lawrence and the children that, they wanna use it in every way possible. It's our, we have to make sure they use it responsibly and safely. So if we have the wildlife officers, the, the federal wildlife officers come down, if you flip the page, you can see them, how happy the kids are to catch a fish the right way. Um, the officers teach them how to catch and release legally and safely. And then the last page, the last picture is the dance program. We have a full dance program with instructors. What's unique about this picture is um, the type of dance that we teach. And you, you guys, we love it. So bebop, 60s, 70s, and 80s, different kind of, so swing dancing and stuff like that, the kids love it. But I just wanted to highlight some of the other programs that the money goes to help. So thank you guys. Yeah, how many kids do I know you have? Okay. Overall at the program, for the 10 week summer program, we have 3,800 kids. Of those 3,800 kids, um, 2,431 full scholarship and 98% of those are from the city of Lawrence. So I do the ice and water safety shows with the fire department. Um, and when I visit all the schools with the fire department, we talk to all the kids about the summer program. The block grant enables us to, for me to say to those kids, come down, you get a free membership, you're part of the Lawrence Public School System, this is what the mayor is here for, to help you. So we bring these funds into Lawrence and we get the kids in a happy, safe place for the entire summer. What are the ages? Um, eight and up can be dropped, I'm sorry, nine and up can be dropped off if they, don't, if they know how to swim, but every age is acceptable with an adult that can swim if they stay with them. How do the kids enroll, like how, do, how does enrollment happen in education? Yep, yeah, so like I said, I go to all the schools to do the ice and water safety over the winter time, and then we're at the YMCA, the Boys and Girls Club, we do indoor rowing leagues and programs. So we have about 900 kids in the spring and the fall in the school systems in the indoor rowing league. So we're talking to these children all the time in the indoor rowing league. But to actually get into the program, they have to bring a parent, they have to come in, and they have to fill up the proper paperwork. I mean, just looking at the pictures, they're, they're on the water. It is, we have to be as safe as possible. Um, we have to know the children, go over the rules, go over the policies, go over orientation. This isn't something you can't just go to the park and throw them into a program. They need to learn and be educated before they start all the activities at the boathouse. And I know you were saying that 98% uh, of students who receive full scholarships are from Lawrence. Yeah. How much, what is the percentage of students, regardless of scholarship, that actually attend them are from Lawrence? Um, so 30, if you have 3,800 kids in total, 2,400 are on scholarship. From the city of Lawrence, I'm gonna say it's it, it's 73 to, I wanna say 80%, maybe 79. 73 to 79%. Thank you. He's coming along with my There is one. I'm on that. When I was a kid, the other day. <laughs> the other day. Yeah. I remember I had to wait for it to close. I had to sneak in. <laughs> now. We still have that problem. They don't wanna go home. Well, but not anymore, now you have, a lot of kids, I mean, I, I go to your program yep. and I see yeah. all that, what you're going to see. That happened because of you. Because before you became the executive director, it wasn't like that. Board of directors and the business owners and Lawrence and not for nothing, you as a committee. When I came in 2011, I, I was challenged by this committee. And um, 
I got a lot of help from the city of Lawrence and we were able to, to build it back to what it should be. So we're very happy about that. Um, I did want to mention one thing. I am so happy with the continued funding. You have no idea. You, you helped provide this program. With that being said, the minimum wage law going up since 2011, basically 2013, uh, 14, 15, 16, uh, 13, 14, 15, and now it's going up again this year is $12, and then 13 and 14, I think. Um, the bulk of your money goes to staffing. It goes to paying our kids to have a job who then in turn watch our kids in the city. It used to be about 24% of the staffing budget, but now with the increased um, minimum wage laws, if you go from 2007, I could use that same bulk of money to pay about 13 staff. Now with the minimum wage law up at $12, that same amount of money is gonna pay for six, maybe seven staff. So we're gonna bring the kids. Kids are gonna come. The programs that we can now give to those children are gonna depend on the amount of staff that we can hire, the kids from Lawrence, to be there, train, uh, and work with our kids. So I was wondering if you could take that in consideration when you're going over the funds to, to fund the program. Do they receive, um, do they eat there as well? Yep, so the Meals on Wheels program through the city of Lawrence. Um, so Gary Watts, I always say, I know Gary retired, but. He was there for so many years. Um, so I would say that we feed at the site the 150 lunches a day. You know, you were saying due to the, you know, increasing the minimum wage and it's going to be yep. happening incrementally in the city. Yep. Um, that then it, it's more overhead cost for you when it comes to employees. Now, I see in the budget the $25,000 is for voting and is that particular to voting employees who will be supervising that program? It's, so the funds that we get from the CDBG, mm -hmm. 1500 pays for busing and transportation from the commons, from the North Common, from the, all the South Walks from the park, mm -hmm. but from the North Common to get all the kids to the boathouse. Um, it's going to pay for in the vicinity of 20 to 30 hours for our high school kids to have a job. Mm -hmm. They're certified in CPR, first aid, AED, and instructor training. We do, for the purpose of the grant, target 30 kids that go to class. But overall, the kids that get a job through the funding and that are there throughout the day with all the camp, with everybody that comes in, they really service the 534 kids a day, which is an average of 2,672 kids a week. Um, with those numbers, I need staff to be in different places to be in ratio. I never want to be really 18 to 20. We can be 25 to one. Who wants to push it to the limit? We never want to do that, especially around water. So I like to be 18 to one, somewhere in there. And we work with all the, it, it, it is great to see all the organizations that are here tonight, because everybody that comes up, I'm like, oh, I work with them. Oh, we do this. It's great to see the kids come up and do it too. So what we do is we take their staff and they come in, bring their kids, and then we take my staff, the boathouse, we put them together and they work together as one huge staff. Um, when I'm talking about the minimum wage going up, my problem is, is I have a glass case at the boathouse. Right now it's full of 30 staff that worked all summer long for 10 weeks with our kids. I was running numbers even the other day. Um, I am very lucky that some other grant organizations that the uh, funding in parallel that you see, um, some of them have gone up a certain percentage, you know, 4% here, 5% there to, to help with the minimum wage law. Um, if we don't get some kind of increase across the board, and I'm not saying this just about CDBG, this is, this is all the people that, that help to make this happen for these kids, we need to think about this as a collective whole across the board, not just you guys. Um, those 30 kids that are in that class case that I even looked at today, if I'm looking at the numbers, the sad thing is I might have to take out three or four and go down to 26. If I do that, does it mean that we're gonna stop running programs? No, we're gonna be there for our kids, we're gonna make things happen. The only problem is, is I might have to take something away, a dance class for a period of time, for three or four weeks, and then only do four to six weeks of dance instead of 10. Um, and, then, and then you balance it throughout the programs, so. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you, guys.
Okay, next up is Youth Development Organization, YDO, Summer 2019. Hi, um, my name is Jasmine Bella Cruz. I'm co-director of YDO Summer. Um, my other half isn't here right now. He's away at college in Ohio. So uh, YDO Summer is a five-week enrichment program. Um, we serve kids grades three through eight, um, and it's run by a staff of 100% college and high school students. Um, at the beginning of the application process, the staff submits um, a proposal of a class that they want to teach. 100% up to them, um, based on their interests and their talents. Um, if they need help with lesson plans or things like that, we're there for them to help them build off that, but the idea is essentially theirs. Um, the first day for the kids, they explore all the classes that we offer, things like RC cars, robotics, ceramics, fashion design. Um, and then at the end of the day, well, before the end of the day, they go and they pick um, their favorite classes for each block. They have three blocks in a day. Um, and at the end of the day, the leadership sits down and we try to make the kids' schedules best fit into what they put down, their choices. Um, they have those three classes all summer. Um, and at the end of the summer, they create a final project for the showcase for family and friends and whoever else wants to come to the exhibition. Um, we also dedicate 30 minutes of every day for our mentoring time. So at the beginning of the first, the first week, um, the staff and the kids mingle around, they get to know each other. And at the end, the kids pick um, their top three staff members that they want to be their mentor. And the staff are doing the same thing with the kids. So those 30 minutes are dedicated to talking to them, getting to know them, playing games with them. Um, it's really just building your relationship with your kids. We assign three to four kids per staff member. Um, and then those three or four kids, you're also responsible for every Friday when we go on a field trip. Um, it's easier for our staff to keep track of their three kids and build relationships with them when we're out than a group of like 10 or 12. Um, those same mentor matchups create lifelong relationships. I've seen staff that work alongside their mentees now because they've grown and become YDO summer staff themselves. Um, more than half our staff are former YDO kids. Um, me and myself, I'm one of those. Um, I worked for YDO for a summer as regular staff and then they proposed being co-director to me. So now what that looks like for me is application process for staff, kid, recruiting kids, um, communicating with parents, setting up field trips and buses and things like that, um, scheduling and all that stuff. Um, along with that, like the staff, I have my own mentees that I spend time with every day and I have my own class that I teach myself um, on top of all that stuff. So that component is important to me. Um, the summer is important to me. I've dedicated two summers to it and I'll keep doing so as long as I can. <laughs> questions? Okay, questions? How many staff will you be hiring with this one? Um, 40 to 45 because we normally take 160 kids so we try to keep um, the numbers. Now, is the staff teaching the course, or? Yes, so the so class. So high school and college, college students that teach the course and become the staff. Yes, so that's why it's important to us that they present their own idea, because if it gears more towards their interests, um, it's more engaging for them and the kids, um, that they're teaching something that they know a lot about, that they want to express to teach another, another kid, things like that. So you'll be hiring 40 to 45 staff for the summer? Mm-hmm. And these are students that are already internally in, involved in YDO programming and then get ventured off into this five week program? Um, not 100%. Um, we do have a lot of returning kids, but through word of mouth, the kids invite their friends, um, the staff invites their friends, things like that. So we do take in new kids. It's not solely like what we've had. Um, we do encourage the kids to bring in their friends and, and things like that. So how many children are you servicing? About 160. More or less. In that five week. In that five week. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Are these children from the area or? Yes, um, we have taken kids outside of Lawrence in the past, but a, like a good 80% of them are from Lawrence or have lived in Lawrence before and then they moved out. So can you tell us a bit more about the type of programs that you offer? So a lot of the ones we have in the past are um, a lot of our engineering programs. So last year we had RC cars, um, tools and building, coding, video game design, um, Lego robotics. Um, for the arts, they had like ceramics, arts and crafts, fashion design, um, music, improv, dance. 
things like that. Those are like the ones that come back every year. We have had kids do like um, like a Hamilton class where she taught like her own hip hop theater. She made that her own thing for five weeks um, and they put it on for the summer. Um, we have had anatomy in the past that I, I was a co-teacher in. Um, I taught forensics last year. Um, classes come and go, but depending on what the staff wants to present for that summer. Now, do the staff present to you as a director or co-director a plan or proposal as to what they're going to be teaching for approval? Is it just so it's not necessarily to be approved. Like they come with an idea. If they don't have like a, a set lesson plan, we're there to help that. So we have people in place to help. But like even me last summer, like building my own lesson plan because I don't have it all together. Um, we have people there, and we help each other. We bounce ideas off each other to create a plan for five weeks. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have ACT Lawrence, Youth Jobs and Leadership Training. Hello. I hope you can hear me. I missed the mic. <laughs> Thank you everyone for your time and letting us um, apply for this uh, grant. We are very happy to report we had a lot of successes last year. Before I continue, my name is Anna Luna. I'm the Executive Director of ACT Lawrence. I've been with the organization for about 22 years, believe it or not. <laughs> I am one of the original founders, but um, today I'm here to speak to you about the Youth Jobs and Leadership Program. Um, I gave you a piece of paper there, a very short summary of what we accomplished last year with the funding that you gave us. Thank you so much for our delegation who also supports our program. Um, and uh, last year we graduated 28 youth that participated in the program. Our program runs throughout the summer over a six week period. We end up uh, using all the funding for hiring uh, the youth, paying the youth, the staff. Um, and a portion of the funding goes to the staff so that we can continue providing this program to Lawrence youth. They work approximately 15 to 20 hours a week, depending on the project they're doing, but mostly they focus on anything from developing their speaking skills, resume writing, email, telephone etiquette. They do some office work in the office, and they also implement neighborhood projects um, like neighborhood cleanups, and um, they help us develop as their final project part of the, the outreach that we do for National Night Out. And last year, as, as normal, uh, we outreach um, about 200 people who come to the National Night Out because our youth leaders do all of the uh, programming and fundraising to make National, National Night Out for the Arlington neighborhood. Uh, one great tip that I didn't put here, um, don't know why I forgot, but it's really important, from that group, there were three of them who got permanent jobs after they completed our program. Our program is not really focused on getting them permanent jobs because we want them to stay in school and we want them to continue learning the skills they need so that they continue on to college. But we're very proud to say that with the skills they received, they were able to get a permanent job after, the, after they completed the program. And last but not least, with support from the Lawrence delegation, and thank you so much to our state rep, Frank Moran and uh, Juana Matias, we were able to um, take the youth to go visit the state house, learn about civic engagement. They saw how some of the um, regulations and policies are built, and they took a wonderful tour that I can tell you they are still talking about how much they learned during that presentation. And I'm open for questions. How many staff do you have in the program? For the program itself, we usually have two that are staff of ACT Lawrence, but from the youth themselves, we hire about six who end up being leaders for the rest of the team. They end up doing men mentorship for each other, and they also um, are supervising a group of about six to 10 of the youth, depending how big the group ends up being. Do you have internal staff that does um, the programming? So you know, great like management, financial management, civic engagement. So internal staff that act does the workshop where these students are learning these skill sets. Yes. So we develop the curriculum, and what we also do is invite other um, experts from the community, like bankers, public speakers, teachers, all kinds of people who could be speakers at one of the workshops. 
Every week, the youth receives one workshop, and by the end of the week, they have to present the project related to that workshop. For example, if they do financial education in a week, by the end of the week, if they are able, they will have to open their bank account so that they can start practicing what they're learning right away. How do you select the youth, the 28 youth? It's very difficult, it's not easy. As you saw, uh, every year we have anywhere from 80 to 100 applicants and we have about 30 positions available or 30 slots. It's very, very difficult, so we do a quick interview process in the beginning as they apply and then we start interviewing more until we hire the, the final 30. So that means you need more money so you can hire more. That would be the perfect scenario. That's why we're here. Uh, we would like to be able to hire uh, at least 80. That would be awesome. But we know that that's not practical based on you know the community funding. But um, most of the time we hire approximately 30 of the youth during the program. And these youth are only allowed to go through the program once, right? So you they can you come back. They can come back. They can come back, and what we do is with the ones that uh, did it last year, they're eligible to apply to be a mentor this year. So the ones from last year, they help the, the incoming class because now they know what to do. They become me mentors to them. But then also what happens is if a position opens in ACT Lawrence, we have also hired some of the youth to be um, one of our staff members. In fact, the current program leader for the youth program, she couldn't be here today because she's sick, um, she used to be a youth leader in 2011, I believe, and she got hired in 2015. And now she is the office manager for ACT Lawrence. So she's been with us three years. Any other questions? Okay, thanks very much. Next, we're going to hear from the Merrimack Valley Immigrant and Education Center, and their project is English Communication for Employment. Good evening. My name is Karen Sheridan. I'm the program coordinator at the Merrimack Valley Immigrant and Ed Center, also known as MVIEC, and formerly the Asian Center. We just celebrated our 31st year of serving immigrants in Lawrence, and we have changed our name from the Asian Center to be more inclusive of all immigrants. And our location is in the Social Security Building on South Union Street. We are participating members of the local adult basic education community, the Mayor's Learn English in Lawrence, and Community Pathways Network. Our proposal is for workplace English classes, which we call ECE, English Communication for Employment. We are addressing the pressing need for non-English speaking heads of households to improve their English proficiency and soft employment skills to get a job or a better job. We provide a 60 hour class that offers workplace English, focusing on job readiness, career exploration, attaining soft skills, and increasing self-confidence. We offer two levels of classes which meet twice a week for five hours, one in the morning, other, the other in the afternoon for 12 weeks, first in the fall and then midwinter. We have a class size of eight to 10 participants with a total capacity of 35 students. A typical syllabus will include development of language skills through how to complete a job application, job search, identifying and setting goals, resume writing, job interview preparation, communication at work absences, job etiquette. We believe these new skills and experiences will improve the applicant's ability to search and find employment, improving their family's quality of life, and in the long run, financial stability and education for the entire family. Through anonymous surveys, our participants report being more self-confident and self-assured for job searching, job promotions. After taking our past ECE classes, which they are uniformly pleased with. So in closing, our agency philosophy, which we impart to our clients, we work hard, we help others, we strive to make the world better. Question. 
So this funding that you're requesting, the $12,000, would be to serve a class of eight to 10 participants twice a week. You said right. how many hours twice a week? Five hours. And it totals 35, 35 participants. How many students have you serviced um, within the last year? About 35 participants. This is a continuing. Uh, you funded us for the past couple of years. Okay, so in continuing, can you explain a little bit about that? Is this um, not the same as uh, the, di the different type of ESL levels, I would believe, ESOL levels? Is this by levels or is this? Well, pretty much they have to have a high beginner level to be in this class. If they, we test them and if they don't have that level, we can put them into a lower ESOL level. Then if they have a level two, they're able to go into this level. And then after this class, if they want to continue on for a higher level, we can, um, we help them, you know, apply to uh, higher levels, sometimes uh, Northern Essex Community College. So with um, $6,000, are you looking to get a new instructor or this? Uh, well, this is the instructor, but if we didn't have this, um, this grant, we wouldn't be able to offer this class. To the 35 students? Right, and of course it's free for them. One question that I have out of personal interest is, do you find that um, in changing your name, did that happen because there's a, a different array of, one, either the Asian population is moving out of, of the city of Lawrence, and, or two, did, did other populations come knocking at your door and you wanted to be able to access? Which? We wanted to access everybody, and, and in the, in the name Asian made people think we only took um, we Asian. only served Asians, mm -hmm. so we tried to come up with a more inclusive name. Okay, thank you for sharing. Now, the majority of your students that go into this employment-based English right. language learning course, um, when you say 50% of them are coming from internal lower levels of ESL, oh, or? Oh, no, I'm sorry, not 50%, just um, any, we test a wide variety of people coming into our program, and uh, anybody who's at the very low level we put into the um, the level one, yeah. So I guess, yeah. And so, so they seem to come in. The ones in the class are already at that pretty much at that level too. So you have like a mix of students who have finished a uh, other some beginner level of English language learning in your right in right. your nonprofit, and then you right. may have some walk-ins who test yes. into test into right. Okay. right. Thank That's you. Great. Thank you. Any additional questions? Okay, thanks very much. Thank you. Our next presenter is Sueños Basketball, the Sueños Youth Leadership Training Program. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity for us mm -hmm. to come and present our program. Um, I'm, a, I'm Jacqueline Marte de Lane. I'm here on behalf of Sueños Basketball. We've been around since 2014, and we serve around 200 kids to 250 kids a year. We have different programs we run all year round, and um, I'm going to let Prisan talk about <laughs> her experience with Sueños. So good, good evening, I'm Sonny Samboy, an administration assistant for Sueños Basketball. And being a Sueños Basketball has meant a lot to me as a teenage girl and as a student as well. This team is my family and is always teaching me different values in life, like doing the best you do with everything and doing the unthinkable. Sueños Basketball has also helped me earn my spot in the National Honor Society Committee by helping me out the entire process, like talking to me, talking to me and like motivating me and like encouraging me to do more stuff in my life. I truly love all the moments I share with this team because they prove to me that a dream isn't always doesn't always have to stay as a dream, and that a family doesn't mean you need to be blood related, and that it's okay to be under God's name. So, it, like, fact, like, Swenio's basketball is not just a basketball team, it's more than that. It's beyond the teacher stuff, beyond the court. Like, it's a really good. Well, you did a great job presenting, so <laughs> kudos to you. Could you tell me, like, um, when do you actually go to Swenio's basketball? Is it after school? How many times a week? What do you, I know you do a lot of, like, college um, readiness. But do you practice? How does that prepare you? Are you on a basketball team on school? 
So I'm actually not an athlete, okay. <laughs> but um, I do do stuff um, after school at times where like you're handling paperwork, like the application that people come in. I'm also to take pictures around, and I actually worked with them in the summer last this well, last summer with um, we hosted like an international basketball tournament where like we actually got to meet people from Colombia. Um, the yard, and we actually even got to go to Colombia ourselves, which was really good because in Lawrence we're not really taught to te talk to other people around. Like, do we just they, Lawrence? We just get stuck in one spot. But Swinney's basketball taught me that there's more to life than just Lawrence. That there's a, a world beyond the city. Thank you, Jacqueline. So the yes. so the coach, assistant coach, ten years. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be happening. Between a all 40, 30. Well, it will be all year round. Um, we have um, we were blessed that um, Valley Work has given us the last two year money to employ, and she was one of our youth leader last summer. Mm -hmm. So we have we want to do that all year round. We have volunteers, like we have kids that have graduated from high school that started with us, and now they're in college and they volunteer all year round. There, I was assistant coach, coaches they teach the kids, they create relationship with the kids, and right now they're doing it, but they're not getting paid for it. You know, only in the summer when we get the value work. And we also work in collaboration with this um, Lawrence Police Department, um, the Housing Authority, the city also of Lawrence, they have been very helpful to us, and Grace Episcopal Church that they allow us to use their basketball court, and they also support us financially. So this will be for the youth to be able to work with us all year round or get paid to be with us all year round because they still come even though they're not getting paid. And this would happen after school. So at Grace yes. Episcopal mm -hmm. Church, you guys are gonna have this program yes. and if I'm a parent, I can drop off my youth if he's interested in mm -hmm. your services. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Very nice job. Thank you. I like that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> are there any other questions? Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. And our last presentation of the night is from Centro de Apoyo Familiar Nueva Esperanza. Uh, good evening and thank you for having us here tonight. I'm Damaris Frias, the Executive Director of Centro de Apoyo Familiar. Um, with me tonight we have Regina okay. and Lydia and Gisela Vasquez, the coordinator of the program. Um, CAF is a non-profit organization in the city of Lawrence since 2006. Uh, the project we are presenting today is Nueva Esperanza, an elementary program that provides English as a second language classes, activities and workshops for the social, emotional, and educational growth and support of the elders. Uh, the program is every Friday for two hours at the SS Towers, mm -hmm. located on Franklin and Broadway Street. Some of the activities that we do is craft activities, uh, talent shows, holiday celebrations, field trips, workshops on health, environmental health, finance fi management, family issues, among others. We provide breakfast every Friday, and also we do exercises and the opportunity for the participants to talk to each other. Um, something really important is for us not to forget about the elderly, the um, suicide um, uh, rates um, in elderly people for, is higher than the young people and people for, from any other age. And that's something that we sometimes don't know, but it's because of the um, isolation mm -hmm. and depression that the elderly uh, population is suffering every time because they don't have the opportunity to maybe participating in many other programs that we provide for other populations. I'm gonna let um, Regina to say something. She's one of our participants. Buenas noches a todos. Good night, everyone. Mi nombre es Georgina Hernández. My name is Georgina Hernández. Participo los viernes en las clases de inglés. I participate every Friday on the English um, classes. Para mí es muy importante. For me, it's very important. Que a los años que tengo, estoy tratando de aprender el idioma. I'm trying to learn the, the language. Gracias. Thank you. Gracias. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
No tenga miedo. Lidia se me puso shy, pero that's fine. How many elderly constituents you guys serve a year? About 75. 75? I experience full time what they do and try to, uh, mm -hmm. I visit the Essex Tower sometimes and I see what you do. Unbelievable. Uh, and you bring that joy to them every Friday. Um, it gives them an opportunity to get out of that building, mm -hmm. yeah. pull out some air, have some activity. I mean, I know some of them don't have a way of, you know, to get themselves to the senior mm -hmm. center. Right? So if you have it where they live, mm -hmm. it makes it a lot easier for them. So mm -hmm. I thank you for what you do there. So all the services are brought to elderly housing buildings in Massive and Mark? Yes, it's Towers. Towers. Yes, it's Towers. Yes, it's Towers. So you go to the Essex Towers, but then the other programming you provide, do people come to your location on Franklin Street for that, like our elderly? We have our offices on Common Street. Okay. And then we provide this, the other services that we have on Common Street. But all the services that we provide for the elderly group is at the Essex Towers exactly. on Franklin Street. And what do you do in your offices, if anything? Just the we do provide uh, asset building programs like um, credit rebuilding, first time home buyer seminars, um, foreclosure prevention. We do have a um, network of churches and we provide education to the, to the community through promotoras, which are mm -hmm. leaders from the, from the churches that we train. And then they provide a workshop education <coughs> of the, through the churches to, to the community on environmental health. Um, healthy eating, uh, finance management, mainly those are the, the programs that we provide. We are a hard approved agency and we provide the counseling that the um, community might need on those services. But the, the request for CBDG money is particular it's for, the for the elderly program. program. Yes, that's correct. Okay, great, thank you. So this staff will be for an elderly staff? Yes. Uh, they need to be resident for the uh, access tower or this can be anyone can apply to? It's open because what happened is that we have, it's mainly for the access towers, but sometimes they move mm -hmm. and they want to come back to the group, so it's open for them to come back to the group. But let's say that anyone who wants to is interested to, to be part of that program, are you providing transportation? You know, the fact that it's only one day a week or yeah, how that works? It is open for anybody who wants to come, but we don't have the resources to provide transportation. Do, um, as far as the mental health services, correct? You provide some, you said something about that? We provide, um, when I said emotional support, yes. it means like the opportunity for them to socialize and the opportunity mm -hmm. for them to talk mm -hmm. and to learn about some health issues that they might have. Um, my, myself, I have a master in mental health, mm -hmm. so I do provide a lot of um, education and tools that they can use to prevent is isolation and depression. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Tamaris, I know that as a nonprofit, the hardest thing an executive director can do is funding, making sure that we're, we can cover programming overhead costs. Um, is there a way with these $20,000 CBDG money and maybe some additional funds that you're getting through the state that we're not only providing this to residents at the Essex Towers, but that we're going to 353 Elm Street, that we're going to Mary Immaculate, that we're going to the Arlington uh, elderly building and taking the time, just as you know, someone who sits on the board just would like to know if that's something that you guys would be open to doing so that we can make sure that not just the residents of Essex Towers are receiving these resources that are much needed, like you said, but that we're expanding it across the city. Yes, that's actually one of our goals, to be able to provide that. Because as I mentioned before, some of the residents, they move to other residents' locations right. and they're looking forward to get those services, and, but we don't have the way to do it, but we would love to do that. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And sorry, is there a way, and this, this may be a, a question you can't answer at this point in time, that with this $20,000 that's going to hire a CAF staff salary and cover some overhead costs, that you could consider if this board decided to grant you your request to actually expand that? Would you, could you make a commitment that maybe we'll branch out to two other locations, maybe we can make that happen? Do you think that's possible or is it not? I think we can work on that. Awesome. Yeah. How much does it cost to run it on Fridays? 
the program? Um, actually, we're running on a very low budget because the only funding that we get is funding from the CDBG right now. Mm -hmm. But uh, it actually takes like the 20000 so we're requesting. For the year? For the year, just because we would need more staff. Like we have elders that they need support when we're doing their craft mm -hmm. activities. We need to help them with their exercises and many other things. So we have to take turns. Right. So we are able to really do the program. But if we have all the support that we have, mm -hmm. it would be great. Okay. Um, I actually started this program in 2001 when I was um, employee of Family Services. Right. And I created that because I knew one of the residents and she was so lonely. And I you said to my me. boss, yeah. let's right. do this. Mm -hmm. But then um, in 2009, they, couldn't, they were going to end it because of lack of funding. Right. So uh, I decided to take the program. But when I used to run it in the past through family services, when they have all the resources, we were able to have like three employees there, uh, you know, helping besides the volunteers. So that's our goal, to be able to, to provide the support that they need uh, during the time of the program. So that's for you. You only have one day and you do for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, tonight we heard from yeah. an amazing amount of organizations doing incredible work in our city. It's not an envious job that you have in front of you to make these decisions. So we have lots of homework, and we will meet with you again on the 20th for your deliberations and thank you for your time this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.